Hello everybody, my name is Abdul Razak Isakji and I'm from Utiala STEM Institute. So I'll be helping you all throughout this video about getting to know the MBlock software. Before we get started, I would like to thank MBlock for putting together this amazing software for everyone around the world to easily learn programming as well as many other technologies in the fourth industrial revolution. Throughout these videos, I will be assisted by a really cool little dude. Say hi to everyone. Hello everyone. I'm an engineer from Utiala STEM Institute. You can call me Panda. I will be helping you all as we all learn M-Block programming together. So how many of you guys like to play video games on consoles or smart devices or even on PC? What about using apps? Don't you think they can be really useful most of the time? Now with all of these things, have you ever wondered how they're all made? If you have, I have great news for you guys. Because we're going to discover what goes into making all of these things possible. I'll give you a hint. It all comes down to a thing called programming. So with programming, you can do a bunch of things like develop all kinds of mobile software and apps. You can design and create really interesting computer games. And you can do things like control robots. To put it simply, a program is a set of instructions that can be executed by a computer to perform a specific task. Okay, so it's game time. So what's going to follow now is a recording of a game that was programmed using mBlock. I want you guys to pay close attention to the details in the game. So look at things like how everything moves around and the sizes of each thing. Now while all of this is happening, Think about how would the rules of the game be written down in the form of a program. So for example, if I press the down arrow key and the character moves down, how would I write that as a rule or as an instruction? Right, so I hope you guys have been paying attention to the last video, because right now, you are going to be programming the game. So the game has four simple rules. Rule number one, up to two players can play the game in dual mode. Rule number two, the game is one minute long, and the player with the highest score after one minute wins. Rule number three, if the scores are the same, the person with the most health points will win. Rule number four, if the score and the health points are the same, then the game will end in a draw. Simple? Cool. Let's go. Okay. So now it's time to get ready for some programming in mBlock. For us to get going with this, we need to make sure that we have all the necessary tools. Firstly, you will need a computer with mBlock software installed on it. You will also need a whole lot of your favorite snacks. Remember to keep it healthy and full of good nutrition. If you don't have the software, I've added a link in the description where you can download it. Pause the video at this point so that you can download and install the software. Right, so if you've installed the software correctly, you will see a little icon on the desktop that has a picture of Fender, our engineer, remember? Go ahead and click on this icon to open up the software you will end up seeing a screen that looks something like this. The next thing you're going to do is click on the Tutorials tab. After clicking on the Tutorials tab, click on Example Programs. You'll find the Tutorials tab where the red arrow is pointing at. After clicking on the Example Programs, a window will pop up. Click on the Stage tab and then look for the program called Space Adventure. Click on this program and then click OK. So when the program loads, the software will look something like this. Before we play the game, let's go through how the game works. To start the game, click on the green flag. To stop the game, click on the red button that's just to the left of the green flag. Use the up and down arrows to move the aeroplane. Use the space bar to shoot. 
you need to either shoot or dodge the round balls. If you collide with them, you lose health, and you will see that your aeroplane will get smaller. When your health reaches zero, the game will be over. To recoup your health, you need to shoot or collide with the red ball having a cross on it. This will also make your aeroplane become bigger in size. The game lasts for one minute, and the player with the highest score wins. If the scores are the same, then the player with the most health will win. If the score and the health are the same, then the game ends in a draw. Makes sense? Go ahead and give it a try. So I hope you guys had fun with the space adventure game. Now it's time to uncover the layers of the game and see what is underneath all of it. What we will be looking for is how programs are constructed in a logical sequence so that it can serve a solution for what is intended. So let's say that we want to make a toasted cheese and tomato sandwich. The first thing that you're going to need are some ingredients. So you'll need sandwich bread, cheese, some tomatoes, maybe some spices. Once you have all of these ingredients in place, you then need a method of how to actually assemble your toasted cheese and tomato sandwich. So the first thing you'll do is you'll place one slice of bread on a plate. Then you'll add some cheese. Then you'll add some slices of tomato. Then you'll add some spices and you'll then add the second slice of bread on top of this to finish off your sandwich. The last thing that you would do is you would place the sandwich on a toaster. Your end result would be a beautifully toasted cheese and tomato sandwich. Make sense? Cool. So while keeping the end result in mind, being the toasted cheese and tomato sandwich, I want you to think about these things. What if the ingredients are incorrect? Would you still get to the same end result? What if the method is done in the wrong order? Would you get to the same end result as well? The programming is exactly like making a sandwich. The inputs of the ingredients are all of your commands. The process or the method is the logical sequence on which your program needs to be constructed. The output or your end result is what you want your program to achieve. What all of this means is that if your program does not achieve what you want it to achieve, then there is something wrong with either your inputs or your processes. Finding out what this problem is is called debugging. So before we get into making our first program, let's first take a tour of the mBlock graphical user interface, or GUI for short. Firstly, you will find a menu bar right at the top of the screen. Here you will find all of the tabs where you can create new programs, save existing programs, or even access examples and tutorials. The menu bar is much like other software that you are used to. Next we have the stage area. This is where you can find a preview of what your program output will look like. You can also use this area to connect a device, set your sprite, or change the background. In the block area, you will find all of the blocks that can be used to construct a program. What's cool about this is that each block is classified according to a different color. So for example, dark blue is for motion, purple is for looks, pink is for sound, and so on. Lastly, there is the script area. This is where all the magic happens. We use this area to drag the blocks and arrange them in a logical sequence based on what we want the program to do. Okay, now it's time to take all of the stuff that we've learned so far and put it into practice. For this section, I suggest that you split your screen in half. Adjust the window where you're watching the video on one side of the screen, and then adjust the mBlock software screen to the other half of your screen. Like this, you will be able to move from the video to the software without too much of hassles. Also, after each step is demonstrated in the video, pause the video, and then try it out for yourself. Remember, try not to learn these steps like a recipe. Understand why you are doing what you are doing. If you feel that you can anticipate the next steps, then go ahead and try it out for yourself. Then see if it is what was intended. Here's a quick overview of what needs to be done for the practical. The main objective is to make the panda move forward. For this to happen, here's a few things that need to be done. 
make sure that the program is created in the Sprites tab of your stage area. Find and select the Events tab, then drag and drop the When Flag is Clicked block into the Script area. Then you're going to find the Motions tab and drag and drop the Move 10 Steps block into the Script area. Once these two blocks are connected like puzzle pieces, click on the green flag in your stage area and see if the output is the same as what was intended in the objective. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the task with you guys step by step. If you still have the Space Adventures game open, it's kind of going to look something like this here. What you want to do now is create a new file. So you'll click on File, click New, and then it will open up a new program. If it prompts you to save the previous file, just click No. And then it's going to bring you to the window that you see on your screen now. The first thing you're going to do is make sure that the Sprite tab is activated inside of your stage area. The next thing you're going to do is look for the Events tab, which is that one. And then you're going to look for when green flag is clicked, which is this one. Click on the when green flag is clicked block and drag it into your script area. The next thing you're going to do is look for your motions tab, which is this one right on top. After you click on the motions tab, look for move 10 steps. Once you've found the move 10 steps block, click on it, drag it into the script area, and place it in such a way that it sticks onto the previous block like a puzzle piece. The last thing you're going to do is click on the green flag to run the program and have a look if what it does is exactly what was intended in the objective. So you'll go to the green flag inside of your stage area and click on it to run the program. You'll see that the panda moves a certain amount of the distance to the right. So if you want to have a look at your program run in a bigger window, you click on this block here, which gives you a full screen mode. If you then click on the green flag, your program runs and you get to see it in full screen view. To go back to the stage area or to exit the full screen view, you simply click on this tab over here. This brings you back to the general graphics user interface or the GUI that we would be using to develop your programs. Easy as cake, right? Okay, so let's summarize all of the key concepts that we've learned throughout this lesson. So the first thing that we learned is that with programming, you can develop all kinds of software and apps, you can design and create computer games, and you can control robots. The second thing that we learned is that the program is a set of instructions that can be executed by a computer to perform a specific task. The third thing is that programming languages exist in a form of graphical programming languages, such as Makeblock and Scratch, and textual-based programming languages, such as C programming and Python. And lastly, the Mblock Graphical User Interface, or GUI, comprises of four main areas. These are the menu bar, the stage area, the block area, and the script area. Okay, so it's quiz time. Here's the rules. Three questions, 10 seconds each. Are you ready for this? Ready, steady, go. Thank you for tuning into the first lesson of the MBlock Steam on Board course. If you're feeling a bit nervous that this stuff is difficult, don't worry. The idea is not for you to learn how to program, 
but rather to learn how to use programming to solve problems. We will be adding more lessons to this channel, so click on the subscribe button so that you will be notified when new lessons are available. Until next time, happy programming with mBlock.